All right, we are at lesson 5.4, and I know you've done lots of graphing, but what I'd like to do today is look at these, what they call max-min applications or optimization problems. You know a lot about max-min because we've seen them before with graphs, right? How do we figure out if something is a maximum or a minimum? Yeah, you know this already. We take the derivative and we set it equal to zero because that's where you get these horizontal tangent lines. And then you can either use the first derivative test or the second derivative test to figure out if it's a max or min. Well, it's the same idea here, except now I want you to actually come up with the equations yourself by putting together all the information you're given into a nice, lovely equation. So you may have done this before too in pre-calculus. It's just you didn't solve them using calculus. You solved them by like finding the vertex of a parabola. Remember those things? Right, there's a minimum, here's a maximum, but now I just want you to use calculus to solve instead. So, if you can take a look at example number one, I'd like you to read that, and then of course we need to come up with an equation to figure out the scenario. You probably want to choose some variables, and then you want to just maximize or minimize things. Well, how do you do that once again with calculus? You got it! Take the derivative! So, there is a procedure here, but I'm thinking let's just go ahead and do it because I'm sure you know the procedure already. So here we go. Um, you got a box, no lid. It's made from 48 centimeters squared of material. If the box must have a square base, can you find the dimensions that produce a maximum volume? So, really, we need to choose some variables right now. Um, since it's a square base, you might be thinking, oh, I know, x and x, sure, as the base. And then what do you want to use for the height? Y, you're more than welcome to do that. So you can say that x equals the length of the square base. Y represents the height of the box. And now, let's see if we can come up with some equations here. So. What is our primary equation? Well, what are we trying to maximize or minimize here? It says maximize volume. So I think we should find an equation for volume. Volume, of course, is base area times height. So the base area is x squared. And the height would be y. Beautiful. So there's my primary equation. We want to maximize volume. That's great. But my problem is I've got two variables on the right-hand side. No good. So this is where I say there might be a secondary equation. Well, there is, because there's some other piece of information here. 48 centimeters of material. So if I'm thinking about material, I'm thinking, hmm, we have surface area. So the material used, well, there's the base, which is x squared, plus what? We've got the sides, yeah. And how many sides do we have here? Yeah, we have four of the same thing. And there's no top, so it's just one base. And this is supposed to equal to 48. So this is your secondary equation. Let's go ahead and solve for one of the variables. Probably solve for y. y equals to 48 minus x squared over 4x. This is great. How come? Because now I can take this and substitute it back into my primary equation. And then I will get an equation with only one variable on the right-hand side. 48 minus x squared all over 4x. And I can simplify this now. Okay, I'll just keep simplifying. Um, 48 divided by 4 is 12, so I think I get 12x. And then I get a quarter, x to the power of 4, and x is just x cubed. So here we have it. V volume is equal to 12x minus 1 quarter x cubed. There we have a, an equation with one variable on each side. Now before we take the derivative and all that, you might want to think about the domain. So what are my domain restrictions for this here? Well, you're thinking about the x value, so of course, the x has to be bigger than 0. And the question I have for you is maybe, hmm, what's the largest x can be? 
Well, the largest x can be means that the y value must be as small as possible. So looking at the equation that I'm just going to highlight now in green, if I make y as small as possible, like if I made that 0, and I solve for x, what do we get for x? I get 48 equals to x squared, so x equals to the square root of 48. And so by making y as small as possible, I'm now saying x is as large as possible. So the domain here must be x being a number between 0 and root 48. Now that's important because then I take the derivative, I make it answers that are outside my domain. I can go ahead and check those, but that will just waste my time. So having this domain here will allow me to hopefully save some time. All right, so all of this work is really pre-calculus stuff that you've done before. It's really just setting up the equations. And now, now we're finally ready to do some calculus to actually find the max or min. What's the calculus involved? You got it. Find the derivative. So I'll use this notation v prime. Derivative of 12x, of course, is 12. Derivative of 1 quarter x cubed is, I think, 3 quarters x squared. Once you've done that, to find the max or min, you want to set the derivative equal to 0. We will quickly solve that. Uh, 12 equals to negative, oops, negative 12 equals to negative 3 quarters x squared. Dividing both sides by negative 3 quarters, I think gives us just 16. And so therefore we have here x equals to plus or minus 4. Of course, negative 4 <laughs> doesn't work. But now, once we've done that, we'll use the number line. So I'll go ahead and find my first derivative number line. We've got our critical number of 4. We know that we're only trying from 0 to root 48. And then now I have to plug in numbers to test. I've got two different regions to test here. I can plug in something like 2 into the derivative and find that I believe the answer is positive. I can plug in something like 5 and also find that it is negative. So slope is positive, then negative at 4. Well, yeah, that just means that mm, x equals to 4 must be a max. x equals to 4 must be a max. And I'll say since b prime changes from positive to negative. Now it says find the dimensions that produce the maximum. So we know that x is 4. We should go ahead and find the corresponding y value. I will quickly do that. So y equals to what? 48 minus 4 squared all over 4 times 4. That's 32 over 16. That equals to 2. So knowing this, and I want you to now answer the question, I'll say therefore, here we go. The maximum volume required. Needs to be a box with the square base of four centimeters and height of two centimeters. Okay? And that's how you do a question like this. So once again, calculus all the way here to help us figure out max or min. The process is the same as what we've done before in figuring out relative maxes and relative mins. Alright, so one more example here. Uh, I'm going to think, hmm, do you think you want to try this yourself? Once again, if you do, go right ahead, do it. If you don't feel confident, then of course, listen to me as I go through this as well. Press pause if you are confident you try it yourself, and then come back and double check your answer. Uh, don't press pause, and just keep listening if you want me to do it with you. So this time I have the product. Of the product of two positive numbers is 288. Okay, so i got two numbers here. Let me call x one of the numbers, one number, y the other number. And we know that the product, x times y, is 288. Okay. Now that might not be my primary equation, that's really the secondary equation, isn't it? Because I'm not asked to maximize or minimize anything, so the secondary equation is that. Okay, what am I asked to do now? It says find the two numbers so that the sum of twice the first, hmm, the 
sum of twice the first, so 2x is twice the first, plus the second, is as small as possible. So as small as possible means minimum. So I'll say S is my equation. Here is my, oops, it's plus, right? Yeah, so here is my primary equation. I'm going to need to solve for one of the variables. Once again, I'm going to take my secondary one and solve for y. Then I'm going to stick it in. So s equals to 2x plus 288. I'm going to write it like this, x to the negative 1, because I'm going to be taking the derivative in a moment. Okay. Um, you might be thinking, whoa, 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 what about the domain? That's right, what about the domain? So yeah, okay, fine, it's domain. What do we know about the domain? It has to be bigger than... Zero, right? Does it have a restriction how big it could be? No. So just the domain has to be bigger than zero. All right. Derivative time to uh, the derivative of 288 times negative 1 is negative 288. x to the negative 2. Setting the derivative equal to zero. 2 equals to, well, negative 2 equals to negative 288 over x squared. 2x squared equals to 288, x squared equals to 144, nice, x equals to plus or minus 12, but once again, our domain here is 0, this is 12, okay, don't need to worry about everything that's negative, let's figure out this region, 0 to 12, and also this region bigger than 12, we'll plug it in once again to s prime, if I plug a number like 1, I get this is negative, and if I plug a number like 13, I know this will be definitely positive. So, what does that mean then? Yes, therefore this must be a minimum, so therefore this is a relative minimum, which is great because I want the minimum too. Uh, this is fine, the two numbers, so therefore I'll say since x equals to 12, y will be equal to 288 divided by 12, that's from right here. 288 divided by 12 is 24. So we know that the two numbers must be 12 and 24. Okay? And this will create the minimum sum. All right, that's it. So try the questions here. For those of you who hate word problems, I'm so sorry, but guess what? This is good practice. And then once you do that, come back for more word problems in Lesson 5.5. See you soon.